Hi there, future teacher. Welcome to another CSAT prep multiple subjects. In this video, we will be having subtest 3, practice test 2. This video is proudly presented by teacherpreps.com, the number one choice for test prep to pass your teacher certification exam. In case you're not enrolled yet and you want a trusted training program that provides all the CSET study materials you need to pass in one place, including a study guide, interactive vocabulary exercises, and time practice tests for each subtest which simulate the type of questions you'll likely receive on exam day, simply visit teacherpreps.com and click the blue button in the top right corner labeled Get Test Prep Now. Before we start, let's take a look at the test structure for subtest 3. Subtest 3 covers three domains, which are physical education, human development, visual, and performing arts. It is composed of 39 multiple choice questions with three constructed response questions. Now this test costs for $99. Without further ado, let's help you get totally prepared for your exam day as we start with question number one. How can an elementary teacher best integrate body and space awareness through locomotor and non-locomotor activities? For this question, the right answer is letter A. Designing a lesson plan that includes a variety of locomotor and non-locomotor activities to enhance body and space awareness. This option directly applies practical and theoretical knowledge by creating diverse, inclusive activities promoting essential movement skills. Now, moving on to the next question. Which activity demonstrates the practical application of biomechanical concepts such as gravity and friction in an elementary physical education setting? For this question, the correct answer is letter B. Explaining the impact of friction on movement in practical activities like sliding and pushing. Option B effectively combines theoretical biomechanics with its practical implications, which makes it accessible and understandable for students. Now, here's another question. How can a teacher design a physical education program that accommodates students with asthma to promote cardiorespiratory endurance? Good job for option C. This option is the appropriate answer to the given situation because this allows students with asthma to participate safely in physical activities by adjusting the intensity and providing rest periods, fostering inclusivity and promoting health. Now moving on to the next question. Which approach best supports a physically active lifestyle in students with diabetes? The correct answer goes to option D, tailoring activities that allow for blood sugar monitoring and appropriate snack breaks. This option adapts physical education practices to meet the specific needs of students with diabetes, which ensures their safety and it enables active participation. Great job so far! For our next question, which strategy effectively includes all students in physical education activities considering diverse abilities and backgrounds? The correct option is option A, selecting a range of activities that accommodate various skill levels and cultural interests. This option promotes inclusivity by ensuring activities are accessible and engaging for students from diverse backgrounds, which aligns with the goal of including all students in physical education. Now, here's a question to challenge you more. 
Coach Taylor is integrating a new unit on traditional and non-traditional games into her physical education curriculum. She aims to ensure the activities are inclusive and educational, connecting with other content areas. What approach should Coach Taylor use to select the activities? And it goes to option B, selecting a variety of games that emphasize teamwork, strategy, and cultural diversity, and connecting them with lessons in math and science. This is the right answer because it provides an inclusive, educational approach by incorporating a diverse range of activities that not only foster physical skills, but also enhance understanding of cultural diversity and integrate academic concepts from math and science. Great job keeping up with the question. Here's another one. How can a teacher integrate physical education with science to enhance students' learning experience? For this question, the correct choice goes to option B, designing activities that explore the physics of movement, such as the effects of force and motion on a ball. This option creatively combines physical education with science, offering students a hands-on way to understand scientific principles through physical activity, thereby enhancing multidisciplinary learning. As for the next question, how can an educator assess the influence of a growth spurt on a student's coordination and movement in physical education? The correct answer is option C, observing changes in students' performance in activities requiring balance and agility before and after growth spurts. This enables educators to adapt physical education activities to individual students' developmental stages, ensuring all students can participate meaningfully. Now you're doing great. On to the next question. Which strategy best supports the development of fine and gross motor skills in children and young adolescents through physical education? Certainly, it is letter D. Integrating a variety of activities that promote both fine and gross motor skills such as throwing, catching, riding, and cutting. This option effectively addresses the diverse needs of students by promoting comprehensive motor skill development through a balanced range of physical activities. Now, how about this? How does incorporating goal setting in physical education classes contribute to the development of a positive self-image among elementary students? Right, for this question, the correct answer is option A. Encouraging students to set and achieve personal goals in physical activities that can boost confidence and self-esteem. This option recognizes the value of personal goal setting in enhancing students' self-perception by achieving attainable milestones, which fosters a sense of accomplishment and a positive self-image. Now, tackling another question, what strategy best supports lifelong participation in physical activity, beginning in elementary education? For this answer, the correct choice is letter B, introducing a variety of physical activities that cater to different interests and abilities, promoting enjoyment and personal satisfaction. This option effectively promotes a positive attitude towards physical activity by offering diverse options that appeal to students' varied interests, which encourages lifelong engagement. Are you still with me? Okay, moving on to the next question.
Which activity best promotes cooperative learning and responsible social behavior among students of varying abilities in a physical education setting? You got it! The correct answer is letter B. Designing games that require teamwork and strategy to achieve a common goal. This option promotes cooperative learning and responsible social interactions, fostering an inclusive environment that values teamwork and strategic thinking. Ready for another question? Great! How can a physical education program Foster a positive environment that encourages enjoyment, self-expression, and communication among children. The best response for this question is option D. Incorporating a diverse range of activities that cater to different interests and skill levels. This option creates a supportive and engaging environment by valuing student choice and accommodating diverse interests, which is essential for promoting enjoyment and positive social interactions. Moving forward to the next question. Which activity best supports the development of problem-solving skills in accordance with stages of cognitive development? Letter A is the correct answer because it aligns with cognitive development theories by offering problem-solving activities that are suited to students' developmental levels, promoting critical thinking and reasoning skills. Shifting to the next question, how can educators apply the concept of multiple intelligences to foster individual differences in cognitive development? The answer to this question is option B, recognizing and nurturing each student's unique strengths and intelligences through varied instructional strategies. This reflects an understanding of multiple intelligences by advocating for diverse instructional methods that cater to individual learning styles, thereby supporting personalized cognitive development. You did a great job for today's video. However, if you are not feeling confident yet or you want more practice, you can always check our website teacherpreps.com or even our YouTube channel Teacher Preps.